A storm of outrage brews in Canada's bustling cities, thousands mass in protests, their chants and anger aimed squarely at Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. His policies have pushed citizens to a breaking point, but his government seems oblivious to the coming tempest. Trudeau stands accused of severely mismanaging a critical issue indifferent to the consequences, but still he forges ahead, heedless of the turmoil left in his wake. Now Canadians are pushing back, demanding accountability and justice. The streets rumble with discontent, but the halls of power remain eerily quiet. Trudeau has run out of time for excuses and empty promises. This growing movement may soon provide the answer. Unless Trudeau makes amends quickly, the angry chorus calling for change will reshape Canada's political landscape. The people have found their voice, and they will be ignored no more. The future of the nation hangs in the balance. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Frustration with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his government have reached a boiling point as Canada's major cities have become flooded with protesters angrily demanding Justin Trudeau's resignation. Mass rallies in Toronto, Alberta, and other urban centers echo the chants of Trudeau must go, as outrage boils over the PM's bungled immigration policies. This citizen uprising underscores how recklessly widening income inequality and declining quality of life has hardened public opinion. At the heart of this growing outrage is Trudeau's mishandling of mass immigration, which has stretched social services to a breaking point. For years, Canada has brought in more immigrants annually under Trudeau's leadership, but critics accuse his government of opening the floodgates without proper infrastructure or resources to absorb newcomers. Thank you. I've seen job lines at city blocks long in major cities all across Canada just for entry-level positions and they're saturated in applications from international students instead of Canadians because it was always like always only by the consent of the government. The result has been severe strains on housing, healthcare, education, jobs and other areas keyed integrating immigrants successfully. With living costs skyrocketing, many Canadians feel betrayed by Trudeau putting foreigners above long-time residents struggling to stay afloat. They blame uncontrolled immigration for creating a crisis in once stable communities now overwhelmed by problems linked to extreme population growth. A new report reveals over 3.9 million immigrants became Canadian citizens since 2005. Canadians want immigration policy to benefit Canada first, not chase globalist ideals detached from realities on the ground. The backlog of asylum seekers has become crushing, national security is endangered by limited screening, and major cities like Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal face critical overcrowding as services reach breaking point. It Trudeau dismisses these concerns as prejudice rather than addressing the legitimate grievances of taxpaying citizens. His fixation on political correctness has alienated voters who welcome diversity but recoil as government policies now threaten social cohesion and prosperity. Even legal immigrants oppose Trudeau going radically overboard to appease special interest groups. The depth of outrage shows Canadians want better leadership and sober governance not more virtue signaling and division. With cost of living surging while quality of life declines, Trudeau represents an aloof establishment that has lost touch with ordinary people. Canadians were promised sunny ways but got skyrocketing inflation and dysfunction instead. Conservatives have laid out reasonable policies to restore order in immigration, including lower annual targets and an emphasis on integration programs. But Trudeau stubbornly refuses to listen, seemingly determined to ram through his ideological vision no matter the damage done. As Pierre Polyev declared Canada cannot sustain over 1 million newcomers yearly given the housing crisis. His common-sense plan to lower immigration targets provides a sensible path forward. For too long, politicians put political correctness over citizens' quality of life. Now Polyev shows the courage to state facts, 
extreme immigration is eroding social cohesion. Furthermore, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith's plea for more federal assistance in settling newcomers highlights the immigration crisis gripping provinces nationwide. But you guessed it correctly, nothing happened from Trudeau or his liberals. With over 20% of new Canadians flocking to Alberta, Smith insists Ottawa must provide more funding to handle the influx. She argues the federal government profits from immigration through taxes that dumps the integration burden on the provinces. However, Trudeau has repeatedly ignored such requests, forcing provinces to bear crushing costs. He denies resources that could expand public services, job training, and language instruction for immigrants. Uh, we had a good meeting with uh, Premier Legault uh, where we talked about some of the challenges around temporary immigration, around uh, asylum seekers. We put forward all the different measures that the federal government uh, is working on, has agreed to do to, to uh, respond to some of the concerns that uh, Quebec is facing. Uh, but I also asked directly for uh, the plan that the Premier has to take on their part of uh, the challenges they see around immigration. We know that Quebec directly controls over half of uh, temporary migrants uh, in this province uh, by issuing them permits. Uh, we wanted to know what their plan is uh, to address and to adjust those permits uh, in a way that is responsible so that we can make sure we continue to grow the economy and respond to the labor shortages uh, while uh, ensuring uh, the uh, uh, right absorption capacity uh, for the province. So, uh, it, was a good, uh, it was a good meeting and I look forward to continuing to work with the Premier. Meanwhile, Quebec secured $750 million from Trudeau specifically to offset immigration costs. This special deal underscores his blatant favoritism towards Quebec. It also reveals his disinterest in alleviating pressure on other provinces bursting at the seams. Good day, sir. Good day, Phil. Are you, uh, you, you are a little bit satisfied, but not satisfied because Mr. Trudeau is not specific in, uh, he's, you want him to cut the number of temporary immigrants in half, and he says, we don't disagree with the idea, but he doesn't give you any numbers. So you're disappointed? Uh, yes, I'm disappointed, because I think it's about time that we put targets with figures, and the problem is urgent. So we cannot say we'll continue working for months and months about the principles. It's about time we put some targets. And there is still 750 million on the table though. Right. So we were asking for a billion, so they offer uh, 750 million, so we'll take the money, but we'll continue to ask for more. And what is Ottawa's total number of temporary immigrants? Yours is 560, and you say that the two, the two governments don't agree on the total number. What's yeah. their number? Their I asked them, but oh, yeah. uh, I was surprised. He, he told us 2 million in Canada. So, but I, I, I didn't study the figures in the other provinces. Smith rightly demands Alberta get its fair share of federal funding based on immigrant population size. But Trudeau refuses to address the irrational imbalance his immigration policies have created nationwide. He seems content to let communities outside Quebec drown in dysfunction rather than steer resources their way. His willful neglect exposes Trudeau's hypocrisy. He champions massive immigration for political gain, yet shrugs when provinces plead for federal assistance. He claims to stand for compassion, diversity, and responsible government. But his actions prove hollow virtue signaling by an out-of-touch PM. Um, we have seen uh, around the world a rise of uh, uh, populist uh, right-wing forces in just about every democracy uh, that we've seen. And um, it is of concern to see uh, political parties choosing to instrumentalize anger, fear, division, anxiety. Um, my approach has always been um, to respond to it to understand it and to look to solve it, to roll up our sleeves, work hard and with ambition for this country and for our future. And I continue to be um, convinced that Canadians are thoughtful about the challenges we're facing and uh, ready to see them solved rather than just allow themselves to be, uh, have their anger uh, amplified uh, without any solutions offered. Trudeau's wild trade of shrugging off collateral damage is the cause of his misguided policies. His immigration agenda has fueled a nationwide housing crisis and crippled health care. Provinces are sounding the alarm over schools bursting at capacity and critical staff shortages, too. This grassroots outrage should trigger deep reflection within the liberal government, 
Canadians have proud traditions of diversity and compassion, but extreme immigration without integration damages social cohesion. The country now needs prudent reforms, respectful dialogue, and less toxic identity politics. The depth of public fury reveals a nation at a crossroads. With Trudeau clinging to power, will cooler heads prevail to pull Canada back from the brink, or will the people's frustration sweep away the old guard to usher in a new era? Trudeau cannot keep brushing off the coast-to-coast -coast chorus of citizens demanding to be heard. Reckless immigration is draining Canada of shared values and prosperity. If Trudeau continues insulting voters pleading for change, it will only unite them more in pressuring for a new direction. The PM's feel-good slogans no longer distract from his abysmal record. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau will confront the human impacts of his decisions and policies anytime soon? Is he capable of realizing the scale of the crisis born from his leadership? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.